But, but if you think about the opposition to rights, equal rights for homosexuals, uh, the opposition comes primarily from religious sources, both, both here in Norway and, and in the United States. This, this is a, a discussion where the only reason anyone is dragging their feet, primarily, is, is because of religious sources. So, let's think about that then. Uh, that side of the coin is saying that it is all environment in the sense that you have free will and that you can choose to be whatever it is you want to be, you, that you have 100% free will. Well, you know, if that is true, uh, then, then the people who are trying to fight for rights uh, for homosexuals are in a little bit of trouble trying to argue with those people. Uh, and in a sense, I found it extremely ironic that one of the people on the programs who, who said he was homosexual and, and basically said, you know, it's a free choice uh, that I made uh, because I'm very individualistic and, and so... So that's, you know, it wasn't enough to be heterosexual, so I decided to go a little more far out and be homosexual. And, and even said to Harold, that, yeah, that he could also choose to do the same. He, he immediately puts himself on, on the same playing field as, as the people who are, are fighting against rights for homosexuals. Because he's agreeing with them and saying, well, it is a free choice. And um, so... I don't think that's where, where they should be. And, and here's the worst illustration, and that is that, you know, in America, I don't know that it exists here in Norway, but there are actually places that some, some gay people go to, to to be deconditioned or reconditioned and, you know, go in the door a homosexual and come out a heterosexual based on environment. So they expose men to watching a lot of football, looking at Playboy magazine, and, and things like this. Uh, you know, a very famous person who went through that and claims to have been cured was uh, Ted Haggard, you know, uh, an ev evangelical pastor who was uh, caught both with methamphetamine and a homosexual prostitute. Um, I personally don't think anyone should, should go out on that playing field and and uh, uh, sorry, what I'm trying to say here is that it seems to me that, that the guy on the show would have to then agree with those kinds of reconditioning because I, I don't believe that anybody is forced to go to them. So they go of their own free will to these places to try to become heterosexual. And I think that that's a tragedy because I think there is no reason to believe that they could have any success and that what they'd really do is increase people's misery rather than allowing them to be what they probably are, just biologically speaking, born that way. And, and so to be able to say then to the opposition to homosexual rights, hello, you know, this really isn't a free choice. Uh, this, this is something, and even if it is, it doesn't matter, but people really are often just born this way and this this is what they are and this is what they need to be and what you need to do is just stop thinking about what they're doing in their bedrooms and uh, realize that it's you're going to have to choose you know just because you don't like that lifestyle um, you ought to choose between what's more important you know you oppressing another person for something that does absolutely no harm to you or anyone else, uh, you have to choose between, between that and, and is it important to sort of punish them, uh, which won't change anything, you know, by denying them rights, it won't make there fewer homosexuals in the world or something. So they ought to just back off, back away from this whole argument. There is no argument uh, for that. So, um, Moving on to the parenting, parenting aspects. Um, as I say, I'm a parent, and in much of this reading, um, 
I became, became to understand that parenting really wasn't quite what I, what I had thought it was and what I think most people think, think it is. And, and that is, we do have this sense that we can sort of form our children into, into what we would particularly like them to be. And, um, you know, the research shows that, that uh, that's not the case. And, and this is not done by researchers who are sort of trying to get that answer. Um, many of the anecdotes that I've read about it were the researchers themselves were shocked at the result because they had assumed that that's where they would find sort of the rest of the variation would be in, in the home environment. Since they had found a certain amount was in genetics, they, they figured the rest would come from there. And it just didn't turn out that way. So, and this is a real shocker since, since uh, we're all sort of, I think both have a sort of instinct that that is what we do is form our kids. Uh, and, and it also makes us feel as if we're really doing something proactive there. So then it's obvious why people would react harshly to that because they immediately start to think, well, it doesn't matter what I do then as a parent. Uh, I can just let my kids go wild, do whatever they want. And uh, since none of it matters, I, I've been sort of negated as playing any kind of important role. But that's also not correct because the, the relationship between the parent and the child is extremely important uh, for, for both parties. Um, you know, for me to just forget about my child because of any of these findings would make me so incredibly unhappy. Um, uh, for all of us, our children are great sources of joy uh, and frustrations, um, but we can still nurture that relationship, uh, help, help them to sort of um, struggle with some of their own um, inner demons, if you will, uh, not in a sort of a sense of religious sense of demons, but, but we, we all as human beings have sort of things that we do well and things that we struggle with. And as a parent, you may be able to see some of these things in your child and say, you know, um, when, you're, when you're doing over here, this is in your best interest. And when you're doing this, um, this one is not in your best interest. And try to help them to see those differences, learn, and just have a rich relationship with them. And it takes a little bit of the pressure off, too. Um, sort of performance pressure you might have as a parent. And it might allow you to, to relax and enjoy your relationship with your kids even more. I know I do enjoy mine, and none of, nothing I've read here has diminished that uh, in the least. Um, on the difference between sexes, um, you know, this is again grounding our ethics in zero equals zero, uh, that men and women are absolutely the same except for their sex organs, uh, you know, seems on the surface to, to give us a clear path to, to making everything equal and fair for everyone. Um, but, I mean, look, look at Norway now, as they pointed out, one of the most free and democratically um, highly rated societies on earth, and yet they still see this disparity in things like women being involved in engineering. I think you'll see the same disparity if you check, um, you know, as I said, with nursing uh, and probably in education, um, in kindergartens, and so on, that you'll see not 50% men, 50% women in any of those professions. 